Hi there, this is Laura Brandenburg from Bridging the Gap, and I'm here today with Lisa Curl from Dominion Energy. So hi, Lisa. Hi. <laughs> hey. So Lisa and I have connected through some training that we did for her and some of the business analysts in her organization, and she's just doing some amazing rock star stuff with her career. And so she agreed to talk to us a little bit about what's happening for her, uh, about the different roles that they have in, in her company, and about some of the other pieces that I've seen her share on social media as well that I think make her contribution to the, the community um, unique and special and something that we can all learn a lot from. So thank you for being here, Lisa. Do you want to just yeah. jump in and tell us a little bit about the role you're currently in and how that came to be? Sure. So right now I am a senior business performance analyst at Dominion Energy. I work in our workplace plan and facilities management group. I'm managing our office sustainability programs right now. So I'm overseeing a lot of our waste reduction strategies, our recycling programs, composting programs, lead building construction, those types of processes, building efficiencies. So looking at that. Mm -hmm. um, I do a couple other things at Dominion Energy um, in terms of like employee development and employee engagement and retention strategies. And then outside of Dominion, I do a lot of work in the nonprofit communities. I'm on a couple of nonprofit boards filling kind of different roles between fundraising, program development, um, different kind of funding strategies, corporate strategy, that kind of thing. So like lots of stuff. <laughs> Wide variety of things, yeah. Yeah, and what, like tell us a little bit about with all these programs and projects you you have, what's, what's your role on them? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so most of the time when we want to start something new and it doesn't seem to fit into any existing group, um, that kind of work comes to me. So anytime we want to start a new initiative, or a new program, usually that comes to me and I will scope it out, develop a process, develop a team, get all the team kind of on the same page, uh, make sure there's guidance documents so that eventually I can roll off and they can follow a guidance document. Um, but I essentially just kind of do the, the scoping, the networking and the relationship building between different groups, different departments, different organizations, figure out what we need um, and how we're going to make this new program work and then start implementing it. And then once it's implemented, usually once it's running smoothly, that's when I'll roll off, roll that onto somebody else and start a new project. Awesome. That's like the fun part of the project, that's right? For so many for people. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how did it come to be? How did you end up in this role? So I started with Dominion Energy. I was hired in as like kind of an administrative assistant role. Um, and over time, I convinced them to just keep giving me more and more things. Uh, the benefit of my position is most of the things I acquire are things that no one else wants or it doesn't fit into them. So it's really easy to say, hey, no one else wants that. Go ahead and give it to me. Let me try it. Worst case scenario, um, if I fail, it wasn't anyone else's job anyway, so you're kind of still in the same boat that you started in, maybe just a couple weeks behind. So there's not really that much risk with giving me the chance to try it. Um, so over the last six years, I moved kind of from that administrative position through our business analyst program into where I am now. Um, I did a lot of data analysis when I started. I did a lot of kind of modeling and metrics. Um, and then since then, I've pivoted more to more of like a project manager or program manager kind of role. And it's just been pretty organic. It's been every time there's been an opportunity for a new project, um, I'm the first person to have my hand up like, hey, let me try that. Um, and just being not afraid to try new things has enabled me to create this position where that's my yeah, and that's, I mean, that's such a big core philosophy, I think, whether you're trying to get into business analysis or get to the next level is just like, hey, I'll do it, right? Um, and it can create a, a big, a kind of a really interesting path for you. So, sorry, a little noise. Um, so what are the, the some of the challenges you face in doing that? Um, I can imagine you might be really busy. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot going on is managing the schedule of a brand new program that's never existed before. So when I start out, people will ask me, how long do you think this is going to take? And since it's something we've never done before, a lot of that is 
kind of a blind estimation. And then there's always conflicting priorities. So I have a couple of projects right now, just this week, I had projects that I had intended to start in the third quarter, which would for us would be kind of August, September-ish is when I was planning to start these things that are now being pushed to literally right this second. So I have some allocation issues that come up. Um, and obviously there's always resource allocation issues with creating teams. So most of the teams that I create are not reporting to me directly. So they're individuals from different groups across the company um, that will volunteer to be part of these programs. So it's also being respectful of their time and the amount of kind of energy that they're able to devote to these kinds of processes. Um, so that's really been the biggest thing. And I think the thing that's helped that a lot is creating really detailed projects scoped with target dates um, and responsibilities very explicitly scoped out so that people know exactly what I'm expecting of them rather than having more vague concepts. And we have check-in time. So I can say, okay, like we're supposed to have this done in a week. Where are we at? Do you need help? Do you want to shift this? What do we need to do so that mm -hmm. we can manage this project schedule and get towards actual completion of the project? And I can also share that with my management, their management, and make sure we're all on the same page if things are getting shifted around or, or anything like that. Yeah, so across all these projects you've done, which it sounds like some really interesting things, does anything stand out like as a milestone, like any specific project or initiative? Yeah. I'm in the middle of a corporate composting program right now that I am incredibly excited about. So as far as I know, knock on wood, um, we are one of the first energy companies in the world to start composting at our corporate offices as a waste reduction strategy. So I started this last year in April and we piloted it here in Cleveland. So I'm based in Cleveland. We piloted it here. Um, and, and it was successful, but it wasn't very well defined. And as we started expanding, by the middle of this year, we'll be at five different locations, hitting about 3,000 employees. By the end of 2020, we might be in as many as 10 locations. So it's closer to like seven or 8,000 employees. It's growing really, really fast. And as we started learning from our implementation, I call things pilots and I really don't know how they're going to go because that way if they fail, it's a pilot and we learn from it and we do it differently next time. But our implementation at one of our sites in Virginia at our Innsbruck site, we built a really detailed schedule with those kind of step by step marks. And that was first off the first time that I've really seen us do that kind of project schedule for a program like that. And it made the implementation so easy that I know that that's what I want to implement. And I can show that to gain confidence with people when I move to new sites. So a lot of times I am going to these sites, meeting people at these sites for the very first time. And I'm making my first impression when I meet them. And they don't know anything about me. They know that I'm like from corporate and that I'm coming here with an initiative. And so to build that kind of trust and confidence that this isn't just a top down corporate initiative, I want to build their engagement. I want them to be on board. I want them to see that we have an organized strategy for how we move through these things. And it involves their input and it involves their expertise and their connections and leveraging their network within the building and their skill set has enabled us to kind of implement programs like this. Our composting initiative, I mean, First of all, it's the one that I'm kind of most deeply involved with right now, but it's also my probably biggest passion project that I've gotten to work on mm -hmm. in the last six years. Um, so at the end of this year, we have a goal of offsetting about 20,000 pounds of organic waste that we will take, that normally would have gone to landfill that will go into renewable processes instead. Uh, our goal is 20,000. I think we'll actually exceed that. My hope is we get closer to like 40 or 50,000, but we'll see. Right, hey, and um, like such a ripple effect yeah. in that, right? A, a huge it's impact. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, food waste is one of the biggest uh, impacts to our landfill, especially by weight. Food waste comprises kind of the largest percentage of our landfills across the United States. So what we can do as a corporation to reduce that is incredibly impactful. And implementing that kind of process change also impacts our culture, right? So employees come in and they see that, you know, we're an energy company and we have all these, you know, renewable energy initiatives. We do renewable energy. We have solar, we have wind, um, we're starting renewable natural gas, we have hydro, but then within our offices too, we're implementing sustainable strategies that employees can engage with every single day. That kind of process, when mm -hmm. you start trying to bring in new employees, 
hits them at a, at a daily kind of personal level, which I really find meaningful in, in our organization. Right. So in one way, it's about, yes, you know, re el eliminating or redirecting that waste, but also I could see it having just this effect in terms of the culture and the kinds of initiatives that come up even from this and even yeah. role modeling that for other organizations, right? And yeah. showing how possible it is with what with what you've done. So, cause I've seen yeah. some of the posts on, you post to LinkedIn, some of these successes and it's real cool to see like organizations actually making those changes inside their company, so. Yeah. yeah, and we have, I mean, we have a composting partner here in Cleveland. I've known the guys who founded it for a couple of years, but we were their first application of a front facing corporate model. So normally they would work with restaurants and they would collect the materials that are generated in the kitchen that would normally go into landfill, but they hadn't worked on the front end with uh, with employees actually putting waste into these streams. And so contamination is a huge issue. That's a whole nother process that we needed to identify and educate and train around this contamination. I mean, you can't, if you put styrofoam into a compost bin and it winds up in the compost pile, I mean, even in six weeks, it's still gonna be styrofoam. And they have to hand to pick that out. And it's, how do you eliminate that? That's the kind of, of business analysis type of problem solving that we're doing um, on this end, which is so much fun. Yeah. And also kind of scary because we don't really know what we're doing, but we're going to figure it out. We're figuring it out. But you trust out. yourself to figure it out, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So now in addition to these positive projects in your company, you do a lot of nonprofit work outside in your own personal life as well. Right. Um, yes. Yeah. I, do you want to just share a little bit more about that? And I'd be interested to hear in particular if there's any overlaps or ways that you see that, like enhancing your career and what you're able to do inside Dominion as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I do kind of a plethora of different nonprofit yeah. kind of activities. You're like the idol. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some of them are more related to legitimate skill sets than others. So um, I work a lot with the American Hiking Society. We do volunteer vacations, which are just a week. Um, that you take and you go into a uh, space on public land and so national forest, national park kind of thing, and you'll work on a trail for a week. That doesn't really require the type of business analyst skill, but it's a really good way for me to escape and recharge. Um, mm -hmm. So I do a lot of those, but within kind of this Northeast Ohio area, on a couple of nonprofit boards. So um, one of the boards I'm on is called the Ohio and Erie Canalway Coalition. I'm on their associate board. And we put together um, some fundraising events like this Tulsa 50 bike ride. It's a 50 kilometer bike ride um, that goes kind of through the city of Akron and down through. And so it's a little bit of a process, you know, and use case scenarios in, you know, when someone bikes from point A to point B, where do we need to have uh, refueling stations, what does the sign up process look like, how many people can we actually accommodate, what are all the logistics of that, um, mm -hmm. how, what, how do we fundraise at different levels, how do we reward different levels, that kind of thing. Um, one of the boards I'm on for Ingenuity Cleveland here in Cleveland, we're focusing on starting a new membership program, so it's not just what would compel someone to be a member and what benefits can we offer, but on the back end on the software side, how do we collect that information? How do we track what date they started? If it's a one-year membership, how are we tracking when they renew? If we're offering benefits that differ kind of year over year, how are you making sure those benefits are equal? Um, and all of that. And how, where do you even store, what kind of database are you building to store all right. information that someone can go out and manage? Um, yeah, I mean, there's so much business that. analysis that happens. Yeah. You know, this was not on the question, so I hope you don't mind me <laughs> giving you, throwing yeah. you a little curveball here, but one of the questions we receive so often, so people will do our training and I'll recommend, you know, volunteer work at a nonprofit is a great way to build experience, especially if you're in between positions or have a bit of a career gap. I mean, it seems like you found all these ways of doing that, but like what what led you, like what would, what did that path look like to getting into a role where you're actually using business analysis skills for a nonprofit? Yeah, so a lot of nonprofits, I mean, are resource constrained. Just by definition, nonprofits are almost always resource constrained. So a lot of times if you just go to them and ask, you know, can I help you? What do you need? What can I consult? And a lot of them are willing to kind of give you a project. 
uh, one of the organizations that I'm involved with in Cleveland is called the Cleveland Leadership Center. We have a Bridge Builders program. So every year we take in a cohort of about 60 mid-career level professionals and we pair them in teams and little cohorts of like six to eight people with nonprofits to work with these nonprofits on a project over a period of six months. Um, so over last year, kind of earlier part of last year, I had a chance to work with the International Women's Air and Space Museum. And so we worked on a couple of projects for them. How do we increase fundraising for their major course on the concourse wine event? Big plug, if you're in the Cleveland area, you should go to that. Um, how do we create an internship program for them where the interns actually have um, skills that they can use, where they're learning and the organization is benefiting? But it's really just reaching out and asking. Um, and a lot of times it's reaching out to smaller local organizations. Uh, there are nonprofits everywhere. There are great uh, websites where you can go and, and look up nonprofits. Charity Navigator is a great one where you can kind of see some information about them. Um, they're rated. A lot of them are rated mm -hmm. um, on how much of what you donate to them actually goes back to their core programming and their mission. Um, but it's really finding things that you're passionate about and then asking how you can help because a lot of them a lot of our nonprofits in the United States desperately need help, and it's not just funding. Um, and it sounds like so if I could extrapolate a few like takeaways there, like choose something in your location, right? That's going to be easier. So find a nonprofit in your location, and almost like be willing to own a project of some sort. And your trust, you're going to use business analysis skills in that project. But I think. It's like you need you just will need to go to them. What project do you need help on? And and the business analysis piece is going to come from that more than likely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I would push the local organizations more than kind of the, the well known national ones. The national ones are easy. I mean, you know, American Hiking Society, I love them. They're nationwide, but there's kind of a limited amount that I could probably reach out and say, can I do this for you? Because it would take them almost as much time to explain to me what they need me to do as it would for them to just do it in house. So the local organizations where you can really integrate with them and where you have the community networks, where you're able to kind of be on site for some time, really understand their business, sit with them, um, and identify areas where either they can improve or, um, I mean, help with those projects they have. The more that you can be close to them, not just geographically, but also with mission alignment, the better fit that will be. Um, and it's not, I mean, it's a resume builder, that's great, but that's not really what it's about. It's about sure. mission alignment, really. Yeah, so finding something that you're legitimately interested in and passionate about and that you can right. see doing, not just as part of maybe the program, the course, but more of a, a long-term commitment too. Yeah. And especially because they're not going to pay you. Like, yeah. they're probably not going to pay you. So you need to actually care about what you're doing because the last thing you want to do is commit to helping them take on a project that's important to them and then get burnout or quit. I mean, you can't, at that point, you can't do that. So the closer that this is to your heart and your soul, um, the more like the more value you'll get out of it personally for doing it and the more value the nonprofit will get because you're likely to really stay with it and give it all your energy. That's, great, that's point. great point. Great yeah. point. Awesome. So kind of back to Dominion a little bit too. I, I love like all the different things that you do. It's so amazing. So, but I know like, so you have this very unique role in your organization, but there's, you've discovered like that's different pockets of business analysis. Can you talk kind of about what the different roles look like? Yeah, so we have about 21,000 employees right now. About 300 or so of them are in some type of business analyst role, and they fall into kind of three separate buckets. So we have business performance analysts, business process analysts. I'm a performance analyst. They're kind of the same um, in terms of concept. And then we have business systems analysts that are more on the IT software side. And what you do as a business analyst really depends at Dominion Energy on the group that you operate in. So even in my group, there are three of us who are business performance analysts. I do projects. Um, the other two focus a lot more on kind of budget and strategic planning. Um, mm -hmm. In IT, they're looking for software solutions and they're building client solutions. They're looking for those kinds of, of use case diagrams. They're building wireframes. They're coming up with what their clients across the company actually need in order to do their jobs better. Um, a couple of friends who are business process analysts, their jobs are to, to define processes. We're a utility company. So like, 
how do we do leak surveys? And is there a, an improvement to the process that we that we use for leak surveys? One of our participants, when we did the Bridging the Cat training, she did uh, an, anal an analysis of our hiring process. So we do testing when we hire in uh, workers for our gas infrastructure side. And what does the testing process look like? Does it make sense to do the kind of verbal interview kind of test before you do the hands-on test or vice versa? If someone fails one, do they move on to the next round? It's all of those questions, how we, from an HR perspective, from an operations perspective, uh, make those decisions as a business. And so all across the company, there are 300 of us doing a whole bunch of different applications of business <laughs> analysis, um, which is cool because you can kind of pivot into different roles depending on, on what you like to do. I like to work with people and I like to figure out ambiguous things. So I get to play in that space, which I love. Um, I have friends who are much more kind of introvert data driven and there are roles for them as well. So lots of yeah, opportunities. Yeah, that's really interesting about kind of tying your personality to the type of role too. Yeah. So important that you show up and get to do work that really energizes and fuels you every day, which it sounds like you found a role that, that really fits that for you. I'm the best job, I'm the best business analyst. I didn't even publish that. So. <laughs> Yeah. So do you see people like moving in between these roles within your company or do people kind of get into one of those three categories and stay? So people pivot a lot. A lot of our business analysts that we that we pull in in the process analysts and the performance analyst roles will usually pull in from inside and those might be career pivots. So a lot of I mean, I told you I came in as an as an administrative assistant role and moved into this um, Type of position, and so a lot of us kind of, kind of from that, we we have some some larger call centers, so we get a lot of pivots from the kind of call center environment into something more um, analytical. It's a really great career path. So once you kind of come into this position, you can hang out in this position for a while. Um, if you leave, you might go into project management. IT is a little bit different because they are specialized, so a lot of them will be hired either from our intern base or from the outside um, into business systems analyst roles. But that being said, um, I have a manager in IT who is trying to poach me right now. So, um, so there is some ability to kind of move in between these positions. So, right. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. So the the business process more from the business side, the different roles, mm -hmm. which makes sense because a lot of those roles that you described are more people oriented, communication oriented. You've, you're showing strengths in communication and then can build the business process piece. Whereas the IT, we've talked like it's a pretty specialized, you need understanding. It's more um, more systems analysts even than business analysts. Right. So there's some kind of more technical knowledge that goes into that. So you're bringing right. people from outside that have that kind of technical knowledge. Um, is that kind of the factor? Right. And I mean, our business systems analysts, they're, they are coordinators. So we still have IT architects. We still have developers. They're, so our business systems analysts are not the people physically gotcha. building the programs, but they are the people coordinating as a translator, I guess, between the business side and the IT side. And so they mm -hmm. need to understand both spaces. Um, I've integrated with them long enough that I do, I think, understand the IT side well enough that I could go into that role. But I think from a, from a business perspective, it would be harder to take someone, for example, like out of supply chain and move them into a role where they needed to be able to directly communicate between the business side and IT without having them experience kind of the intermediary um, yeah. process analysis kind of position. Right. So understanding the business first and kind of how to do some analysis and then getting more deep right. into the, the technical analysis. That makes sense. It's a lot right. of sense. So, I mean, I mean a lot another of people thing, come to Go ahead. A lot of people come to us and they stay in their career with Dominion Energy for like 30, 35 years. Uh, we don't have a lot of turnover, which we're really, really lucky to have. Uh, people tend to come to us and stay, which is great. So they have the time to kind of build their careers here, get really familiar with the business side, and then move into something um, mm -hmm. different, but within the same business. Very cool. So now one of the programs that you initiated, this is how we got to know each other, right, was the actual training program that we did. And hearing you talk now, I'm thinking, oh, this is kind of one of, of Lisa's special projects right? that she created from the ground up. Is that is that kind of right? And I know other people want to bring, you know, whether it's our training or somebody else's training, but like, how do I get past 
the hurdles of having my organization invest in training for our team. So could you just share like a little bit about how that worked, came to be, and 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 what that looked like for you? Yeah. yeah. So there were a couple different drivers for us to move forward with business analyst training. Uh, one of the drivers was that we were looking at succession plans. We were looking at career paths for some of our employees, and we knew that they wanted to come into the business analyst role. Um, and it was we don't have a lot of internal training for business analysts. You kind of come in and you learn as you go. And so we wanted to be able to have some training to prepare them in advance to take on these positions so that there's a succession plan for me, right? If I would move and go somewhere else, there's someone who can step into my role and kind of take that over. Um, another thing that we found was that, I mean, because we are all doing kind of radically different roles within the business, Sorry um, we wanted that. a shared language. <laughs> We wanted a shared language within our business analyst, right? So we wanted um, me to be able to talk to a business analyst in fleet or in gas operations and be able to explain kind of what we're doing so we can balance ideas off of each other, have a shared language so that we could rotate if we needed to, we could help each other, we could, I mean, have those kinds of conversations. And because there was really no formal training for business analysts here and because, um, we are so also radically different. We didn't have that before. So this gives us the ability to almost kind of job shadow as we were doing it since we did it as a cohort. So we could learn what each other was doing, um, talk to each other, be able to share our problems, about, get you know insight and advice, and, and then also train those individuals who wanted to move into this role to ensure that they had the base level skills that we're expecting when they would come into to a position like this. So. And you had great support from a management level too, right? And so, but that bigger vision, which I'm hearing now was, was around career pathing um, and starting to form that industry link or that kind of standard language within your company, which really goes a long way over time when you're talking the same yeah. language instead of all doing things kind of your own way, which is very yeah. common, right? Like to like, yes. like it works for me, right? Yeah. I'm going to do it my way and like to start to, to share those practices and find best practices. Yeah, and I have amazing management. I mean, honestly, like my boss is phenomenal. He has been incredibly supportive of this. And um, I mean, we've, we've been really strong in employee development. And so, um, I mean, we want to take, we have so many random projects. And a lot of them come to me and I literally can't do all of them, right? So we have so many random projects. We want to be able to take like this next random project and give this to someone to try. Because again, like try it. If you don't, if you can't do it, that's fine. We didn't really have time to do it anyway. Um, but let's try and make you as successful as you possibly can be. And if you do come with something valuable from this, like that's awesome. And it's great development for you. It's great development from the business. It enables us to kind of do some of these projects that fall maybe a little bit lower on the priority list, but are still really valuable projects. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's a lot of things that we can play with developmentally. And we just needed to give people a roadmap to, to approach these kinds of kinds of problems, kinds yeah. of projects. And what's the outcome then from that? Yeah, so it's it's been really nice because we, and especially the individuals who went through this course, I know that I can take those kinds of projects and, and give them to those people to, to work on them. So I know right now we're working on a new um, inspection form for our janitorial service. So we want to be able to assess in our 350 office buildings across 19 states, how our janitorial services are performing at each of our sites. We're looking at building a form that they could use on an iPad, our contract services coordinators could use on an iPad and mark kind of how they're doing. And then store that in a database, be able to uh, manipulate that information, draw conclusions from it. And so there's a lot of business analysis that goes into that, right? So it's not just what are the questions and how do you build something like that? But also, what's the process? What's the use case? What happens if you know vacuuming is insufficient? Do we require a picture? What do we do? All of those questions. Wow. So yeah. we have a project like that, and I know that I can give that project to one of the individuals who has gone through this training course because it's pretty. I don't want to say formulaic, but right? You have a you have a strategy for how you approach that. You have a strategy for build a team. Ask the questions figure out the wireframe, like do these things, and you can do that and you can run. And so you can build that where we don't have any other resources to build that, right? So otherwise that wouldn't get done. 
And um, being able to just kind of put employees through this training and then know that on the back end, you're going to get legitimate ROI and business value out of that is phenomenal. Um, awesome. And it, it's like you're getting to replicate yourself. <laughs> yes. yes. It's like cloning. It's great. <laughs> Lisa cloning. That, that could be the pet name. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I think um, the takeaway around like the management support and how this fits into the career path is a really big piece because like the training, I always feel like the training is just one piece of like a bigger mm -hmm. something, right? There's a reason people need those skills. There's a gap that you have. There's an opportunity in your company. And I, I just love that to hearing about the investment that um, Dominion is making in their employees. So that's awesome. Yeah. So one final question I like to share or close all of our interviews with this class, this question. Um, but what does success look like to you? I am, I'm honestly really in love with what I'm doing right now. Um, I'm really thrilled with the projects that I'm working on and all the different places that I get to apply this. Uh, when we talk about right cloning me and kind of replicating that, I think my long-term vision, and knock on wood because I'm not completely married to this, my long-term vision is I'd like to get into a consultant role where I can do this, not just at Dominion Energy. I love Dominion Energy. It's phenomenal, and it's had so many opportunities. But to create a consulting role where we could do this kind of work at many different organizations. So I have a lot of friends in like the restaurant industry or neighborhood development coalitions that are looking at how do we incorporate sustainability into our business strategy in a way that makes financial sense, in a way that we can maintain, in a way that's not incredibly labor intensive, and how do we measure our impact, right? And so I have experience doing that here at Dominion Energy. I have experience working with different nonprofit and for-profit organizations that do that. Um, and it has a lot of meaning. It has a lot of meaning to like my heart and my soul. So I'd like to find a way where I could broaden my impact um, in that specific space to help you know organizations around my community and the, the broader I mean world <laughs> to make those kinds of changes. So I'm kind of moving moving towards that based on having a very well defined process and getting to practice it so much within my organization so that I have a good formula um, for how to implement that other places. So that's kind of my goal. Awesome. I love it. And I, I, I met, there should have been a question before that last question. So is there, like we talked about so many things, was there anything else that you wanted to share or make sure that people listening in uh, had a chance to hear from you today? I think, I mean, the biggest part is you're never going to be completely ready to take on a new ambiguous project. And I think a lot of people, and especially women, I think they will hold back from diving into something until they're completely certain that you're gonna be successful. And honestly, my entire career for the last like six years has been me winging it with a really big smile and a lot of confidence. And you know, there's always gonna be things that don't quite work out the way that you think they're gonna work out, um, but you can adapt to that. Have enough kind of confidence in yourself and your skill set to be adaptive. Um, and to not be so afraid of failure. Because again, I mean, I chose projects where I totally could have failed. And the bar of risk, you want to kind of you know, moderate that. So don't pick something that if you fail, is going to completely bankrupt a company. Um, but take some, some well-moderated risk and, and just try some new things. Because that's how you build the skill set to have the confidence to just keep trying those things over and over again. And that's literally been how I've built my career so far. So it's worth I love out. that. That bar of confidence is a great or um bar of risk, right? You don't have to risk your whole whole career. You can take incremental risks forward to, to yes. keep expanding your opportunities. I love that. Love that takeaway. Yeah. And we all have imposter syndrome. Like I come home at the end of the day sometimes and I'm like, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing and I'm terrified. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go back to work the next day and I'm going to smile. Yeah, and look at the <laughs> impact that you get to have because of that. And that's really what, I have the same thing, right? Like, who am I to be here? <laughs> it's like you just keep showing up and hope that you keep helping people. So, well, yeah. thank you so much. This has been absolutely phenomenal. I've learned some things about you that I didn't know and uh, and also just I think it's going to be really well received by our community and thank you so much for taking the time to meet with me today. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm happy to help anytime. I love uh, I love bridging the gap and I love kind of what you've done for me and my employees. So you're, you're awesome. Oh, thank you. All right. Bye.